parables are so cool. Stories that have meaning. Really cool. There's about 50 of them in the New Testament. In chapter, or in the book, Matthew, there's 17 of them. And as we know, in chapter 13, like I've mentioned before, there were seven of them. Or maybe eight. I think there's eight. There's a small one there that some people may think are... Is, is not really one of these parables. It's just a small, quick thing. We'll talk about that at the end. But if you remember, Jesus um, was on a boat um, in the Sea of Galilee when he said these uh, parables. Um, it may have had a sail. Some boats had sails, some didn't. And usually there's small fishing boats that happen. Now, um, Jesus actually sat, even though he's standing in this one, this little figure doesn't really sit. I mean, yeah, he doesn't sit. Otherwise, I'd just lie him down. They sat in the boat and talked to them as they stood on the shore. One of the Gospels say that. So if you remember the first, uh, the first story that he did was literally called in the Bible, the parable of the sower. So that actually had a name where some of these others don't have a name. Well, here it is. We've got uh, the, the uh, parable of the sower, if you remember. Basically the main meaning. And there's lots of wonderful things in it, even though you're not supposed to take in a parable every single thing and say every single detail and say that has a meaning that has a significance usually it's an overall uh kind of uh, sense of what the parable was out the kingdom though rejected you know the kingdom of god has been being rejected at that time and now the kingdom of god um was rejected and doesn't produce fruit in most hearts like the farmer plants a lot of seeds and it really didn't work. You know, what is it, the problem with the seed? Is it the problem with the kingdom of God? No. The kingdom, though rejected and doesn't produce fruit, and most people, that's really sad, does succeed to make it in good ones, in good and honest hearts. And uh, so the farmer has a lot of difficulties. You know, a real farmer has difficulties with weather and soil and things like that. And this is a problem in these parables. The soils were the problem. And yet it was worth it to the farmer to go ahead and plant seeds to get a harvest. And there was an abundant harvest. There are a, a number of people that really get saved and all. And so that's the parable of the sower. And uh, if you remember the four different grounds, one hears, he doesn't understand, super sad there. One hears, understands and receives it, but he's got rocky places. It's kind of hard hearted and all. And so it really doesn't bring forth fruit. The, uh, the third type of soil, if you remember, the third type of soul or soil um, is a person who hears, understands, receives the word, and it's kind of mixed with other things. Remember the thorns. And then uh, the fourth one is the right one. Yeah, herk is hears, understands, receives, and keeps the word. So that's what we want. We want to, uh, I want to um, do what Jesus said in that passage. He said, he that has ears to hear, let him hear. So this is a point, what are you, what type of hearing? What are you doing with the word of God that you're hearing? If you're reading the Bible, or is that really doing something in your life or you're like one of those bad soils? So he that has ears, let him hear. Like really think about what you're saying, uh, taking it in as, take the word of God and take it and let it affect your life in a wonderful way. Well, there you go. Our, our next parable, which, by the way, is in that boat. The reason I brought the boat out is to say that I think he just didn't say a parable. And he said, okay, bye, you guys. See you tomorrow. No, he said parable after parable after parable, in my opinion. Now, it's possible he, he definitely repeated things. Just any good teacher, any good preacher is going to repeat a lot, you know, with different crowds and even the same crowd. Paul said, by the way, in his letter, and Peter said, it's not bad for me. It's a good thing to repeat, you know, so that brings you back, brings back to remembrance what you've learned. The next story is another agriculture story, a farming story. Well, you know, 90% of the Mediterranean world had 90% had, uh, of the people were farmers. <laughs> uh, that's the suggested rate about that. It's a lot of people in, in, in farming. So Jesus was slick in a good way. It's really cool, very smart. He realized these guys really know about farming, so I'm going to keep using that. In my opinion, he was probably right around that area where he maybe even said, Hey, the, and he pointed, you know, he pointed over there, you know, oh, by the way, you know, the kingdom of heaven is like this. And oh, by, by the way, that's how this next story starts. You ready? It says the kingdom of heaven is like, by the way, the next parables, a lot of them, it says that. First one didn't. He said, oh, a man went out to sow, you know, a man went out to plant. This one literally says the kingdom of heaven is like a man who, now he's not saying the kingdom of heaven is like a man, but it's what the man did. The, light, the kingdom of heaven is like a man who sowed good seed in his field. Okay, so he threw out some seed, like the other one, in his field. 
And so think about, the, by the way, the man, by the way, I well, I don't know what if I want to tell you right now. <laughs> Let's just go on. So the man uh, uh, planted seed in his, remember that, his field. Well, while his men slept, what men? Who are they? Servants. This guy seems like he was a wealthy. You know, he had a lot of servants, a lot of people, big fields probably. And he... Um, while they slept, it's not like they were being lazy. They had to sleep. They went to bed. Guess what? An enemy came and they, he planted or the enemy with his people came at night unbeknownst, like they didn't know the other ones were asleep, that he was going to do that. He planted all sorts of weeds, uh, what the Bible calls tares, T-A-R-E-S. So he planted seeds all the way through his field, you know, which is, by the way, what it is, is it's Darnell, most likely. And that is a seed that looks just like the um, other one for a while. Like, let's say it's a wheat seed. Like he, the first farmer planted seed. Another guy comes around, an enemy of that farmer. He didn't like the farmer. He wanted to destroy his crop and he wanted to have the profits and make money and all that. So what he ended up doing is planting Darnell, a really type of seed that's, by the way, poisonous. It, it, it can make you nauseated, it can sick, and I've actually read that in some places it could kill you or something. It's really bad stuff. It makes dizziness, causes dizziness if you eat this. Um, it's kind of like a, it's probably, Darnell is like a grass or a weed that comes up. And so um, he planted the seeds. Now, when this thing started coming up, the men uh, who were hired, you know, the servants of the um, original farmer whose farm that was, um, the fields, they said, didn't you, they, he, they went to the farmer, the good farmer and said, didn't you uh, plant good seeds in this? He said, yeah. Um, and I'm saying in my own words, he says, well, tares are coming up, you know, like you're getting tares and wheat. Now, in the beginning, you couldn't see it because that's true. It actually looks the same. Just like if I were to show you these, um, these uh, cans here, can of beans. See, here's a can of beans, okay? It's uh, green beans, whole green beans, and this is whole green beans, kind of like identical twins. So the plants that were being planted there were like identical twins in the beginning, but as it came up, it started, and, and the harvest started happening, like the, the wheat uh, comes out, like the, I don't know how you say it, like corn has corn on the cob, the wheat, uh, I can't think of the word. Anyway, came out, it's like, wait, the tares are, they're different. And see what happens is uh, they were the roots uh, of the wheat and the tares were entwined together underneath. And so, oh no, what are we gonna do? And the, and the, uh, the servants said, the men said, should we uh, take and destroy, collect the tares, get them out of there? He said, no, if you do that, Oh, wait, I got to say this. The farmer said an enemy has done this. So the, the guy, the owner of the field says, oh, an enemy has done this because he knew he didn't plant bad seeds. And so what happened is um, he says, you can't, you can't go take it out now uh, because if you do, because of the roots being planted together and they're really right in there together, it's going to, um, it'll affect the wheat and you're going to destroy a lot of the wheat. Wait till the harvest, wait till the very end there. And then when it's ready to be harvested, it's all good. Then you could take, go and take the um, tares. You could, it's easier to divide them at that point. Even if you leave the roots down there, because they're all entwined, you could take the fruit, you know, the vegetables off of the, the wheat. And so, um, so that's what he said to do, wait. And then he said, take the tares first, bundle them up, bundle them up and burn them. Okay, they're no good. Then he said, take the wheat, and take them and uh, collect them up and put them in my barn, okay? And so this is a really good, st good story. Now, uh, these are uh, actually good green beans, but if, if I had one that's bad, it looks the same in the beginning, but you open it up and that's what it was like with the, uh, with the uh, parable of the, you could call it the parable of the weeds, or you can call it the parable of the tares, if you wanna learn that new word, if you are not aware of it. You could call it the parable or the Darnell. <laughs> All right, so you got these, um, this story. Now, what was the meaning of it? Well, I think what happened is uh, they asked him. Yeah, um, then he left the crowd. So he spoke that to the crowds and the disciples. His disciples came to him. 
I love those words. His disciples came to him. The followers of Jesus come to Jesus. When I don't understand stuff, I go right to Jesus. I go right to him. Like, especially well, anything, anything. I go to Jesus about everything, really. But there's times in my life, for example, I, I didn't know what was going on, and I came to Jesus. That's the source. Go to him. Don't go and try and figure everything out in your life. <laughs> they came to him. Right place to go. And explain to us a parable of the weeds in the field. And he said, the one who sowed the good seed. Now, do you know the meaning of it? Now, this one, each detail has a, not every one of them has a, has a particular meaning to it. So parables do have meanings to it. And sometimes specific uh, things have it, uh, you know, tell about it. He said, the one who sowed the good seed is, do you happen to know who that farmer was? In this case, it was, here's that famous phrase. What's the most used phrase that Jesus spoke of himself? Do you remember it? Did you say it? Son of man. Mm -hmm. Son of man. And that is showing divinity of God. Even though it has man in it, if you remember, I've talked about this. Even though the word man is in it, it really is a, uh, a more of the focus on, on that it's God. You know, and this is God in human flesh, basically. And, uh, but that was talked about, that was mentioned in Daniel 7, who is a divine one. So this farmer is the son of man, okay? Uh, the field, you know what the field represents? If you said church, that's not right. It's not true. The field is the world. So picture the whole earth, the whole globe, the whole world. So the field is the world. And then he said, the uh, field is the word in the world, and the good seed stands for what? The sons of the kingdom. Ah, the, good, the Christians, the ones uh, of the kingdom, the guys who are under the rule of God. He says, the weeds are the sons of the evil one, the tares, you know, the weeds that were planted there, evil one. So sons of them. So there's children of God, children of the devil, basically. Many, many children of the devil, more than the uh, wheat. Okay, but that's not the particular um, emphasis here on this one. He says, the weeds are the sons of the evil one and the enemy, who's the enemy? You probably could guess that. Who planted those? If you said the devil, you're right. So do you have it? Okay, so you have, what was it? The farmer, which is Jesus. The field, which is the world. The seeds are good people and bad people. Okay, and then the devil is the, is the other farmer. <laughs> he came out planted. And uh, so it says a harvest. What is that? You know, when you go ahead and harvest it, get to collect all the bad ones and then the good ones. He said the harvest is the end of the age. Who are the harvesters? Who are the ones who went out and harvested the men? You ready for this? This is so cool. I love it. Did you guess this one? Angels. The angels of God. So picture at the end of the world. It says, as, this, as the wheel, weeds are per, uh, pulled up and burned in the fire, the sinners collected first. In my opinion, this actually is a, an order thing, even though it doesn't have to be. Um, the sinners in this world are going to be collected first. A lot of people think the Christians go first. I don't think so because, because of this passage and others. As the seeds were pulled up and burned in the fire, so it will be at the end of the age. Hmm. So the end of the age happens, uh, the terrors are taken up. The Son of Man will send out his angels and he will weed out of his kingdom. The whole thing, the whole earth, underneath this earth is, the, is God's kingdom, God's reign and rule on the earth. And they will weed out of his kingdom everything that causes sin and all who do evil. He's going to take the sinner and collect them up. Picture, he's collecting all the sinners. He's going to divide them the sinner from the saint, the sinner from the Christian. They will throw them into the fiery furnace. Guess what that is? Oh, hell. It is. There's a real place where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, weeping and crying and pain, gnashing of teeth. I think it's just, uh, pain. You're really in pain. Grit your teeth. Then the righteous, he said, that's the good seeds, will shine like the sun in the kingdom of their father, will shine like the sun, bright, you know, beautiful stars, you know, and God's kingdom. And then he repeats this, he who has ears, let him hear. So listen carefully is what he's saying. Pay attention to what I'm saying here. So um, that's the story right there. And so um, the meaning uh, overall, basically, if you, well, I already just gave the meaning, <laughs> you know, but here's the thing to think about. Like there's several things you can think about. One is that God allows evil to go on while there's good going on. He allows evil and good to grow together. You know, it's like people were getting good in God. People were getting worse in the devil. You know, the Bible says, Paul said, 
evil men wax or become worse and worse, but they're growing together. He allows evil for a purpose. He wants the fruition. He wants the righteous person to grow up in Jesus, you know, and all. But still, it's a mixture in this earth, isn't there? There's good and evil. There's good people and there's bad people. There, he allows and tolerates and permits evil on the earth for his reasons. Maybe you don't know all the reasons. We don't, but he has reasons for it. And um, and then the, here's the other big thing. See, at that time, a lot of people would think, and even nowadays, think that the kingdom of God if it comes, it changes things right away. It was, it's still changing things. We'll get that in these other parables coming up. It's still changing and working in, in the world today, but you can't see it. Just like you can't see the tares and the wheat, you know, sort of, it's hidden, sort of. And it, uh, it's, it's like, it, it's not unsuccessful. Like for me, I am a case of success. Jesus has me as one of the good seed, praise the Lord. I praise him for it, not me. I'm one of the good ones of this, whichever can is the good one, you know, and uh, because I've accepted Christ. And so, um, and I'm growing and you, you want to be on that good side, please. And the, the point I think is the uh, main point of this thing is that the kingdom just didn't come and just stop all evil. Jesus came, by the way, he started the kingdom and it, good is happening, but he didn't stop all evil when, when he, you know, when he came 2000 years ago. And that's what the kingdom of heaven is like. It's still already not yet. It's happening right now and then not yet. And finally, it's gonna be at the end of time, it's gonna all be changed, all right? God will really take it and destroy evil and take the people out of the earth and, and all that. All right, hope you got something out of that. Really cool, Jesus is a great storyteller. I love a story, a good story. Boy, this is a good one. Please give your life to Christ if you haven't yet, okay? God bless you, bye.